Hey everybody, so 3D printing. If you ask about 3D printing, you'll get two replies. There's dopes like me that'll say, ah oh, no, that's easy, that's a piece of cake. And then you'll get a whole group of people who'll say, no, that's really difficult and you have to know a lot of stuff and you really have to work at it. And you have got two answers for a very good reason. I mean, those guys are right. To become a master of the craft, well, it's like anything. It takes experience, it takes practice, it takes working at it. But to do it, that's something entirely different. Most people, when they think about their television or their car, they don't want to know the ins and outs of it. You just want to turn the TV on and watch it. You just want to get in your car, turn that key. You don't care about the engine and how it works and how to optimize it. You just want it to do the job it's supposed to do. And that's the way I come at something like 3D printing. And of course, the manufacturers understand this as well. So a lot of work has been put into 3D printers to make them no more difficult to use than your car or a mobile phone. And that has made things stunningly easy to make a start at 3D printing and to get good results from it that you can be proud and pleased of. And of course, as you go on, well, you're going to acquire those skills because you're going to learn. We need to learn everything. I mean, we need to learn to tie our shoelaces, how to feed ourselves, not to pee ourselves, all of this stuff has to be learned. And of course, you'll learn 3D printing as you go on. But you want an easy to start and you want some nice stuff that you can make so you can go, hey, I made that. And it, that is much easier than you may think. There are a whole load of free resources available. The first one I always point people at is Thingiverse. Thingiverse is just a collection of 3D designs that you can download immediately to be able to print them. If we type in gears, for example, hit enter, it'll bring up a whole load of files based on gears. If we hit that, which is tiny planetary gear set, it'll jump to the page where you can download all of the STL files to print off and make that thing. And there are the files that you would require. Equally, you've got places like printables. Printables are exactly the same thing, giving you a whole load of, it's millions of STL files that you can print off. If we look at all 3D, uh, 3DP, then you can see that they list the sites that you can click on and whether they're free. Um, Colts is a combination, some are free and some are paid, or if they're quite simply just paid. But all of these, have free STL files that you can just download and use. Now, downloading and using other people's files, of course, may not be satisfying to you because you might want to create your own thing. But the point of having those files is if you just like the look of them, then they'll introduce you to 3D printing. However, you can also use those as the basis for building your own things without having to go through all the trouble of learning how to draw an awful lot of stuff. It does create limitations in itself, but it does help you to create new things by using some of those files as a springboard for your own ideas. Now, it's an open source community. Nobody minds. You're quite welcome to do this. And if you do it, they ask that you recognize. You click this is a remix and give credit to where you got those files from. But being able to chop them and change them, move them about and do what you want with them is something the 3D printing community is quite pleased and happy to do. So you welcome to use those files as the basis for your own designs. So to look at that idea of taking something else and chopping it around a bit to create something new, what we're going to do is a bobblehead project. Now, bobbleheads are actually much older than you might think and go back as far as the 1600s when there were nodding Buddhas in Buddhist temples and they may well be predated um, with the Thanjavar dolls of India being earlier than that. But in Western terms, I suppose bobbleheads came to popularity in sort of the 1920s through their heyday in the 1950s when they were made out of porcelain and there was just a ton of giveaways, mostly in baseball. They grew again in the 19. 90s with the advent of plastic injection molding replacing porcelain molding and then in the new millennium the year 2000 and plus there was a big growth in the personalization of items where you could create your own bobblehead with your face on it 
Now, of course, we're into 3D printing, and 3D printing is all about that kind of personalization. So it's an item that you can produce that is all about you, that you can make one of, and that's kind of ideal. Now, we've already got a scan of my head. I took it when I was doing the uh, Revoco Miracle, uh, Revo Point Miracle scanner. But there are other options for being able to do that if you don't have a scanner. This photogrammetry, for instance. And there are free versions available, like 3DF Zephyr, for instance, or Colmap, if you want to get into it. And photogrammetry really just takes a series of photographs and stitches them together as a 3D object. But it's a way of getting a scan of your head, should you want to. So we've got the head, and of course we want a body. If we jump over to Thingiverse, and I've often been told that I look like Doctor Who, so if we type in Doctor Who, hit enter then we'll get all the Doctor Who stuff people have been working for alongside all the Daleks and Tardises. There's David Tennant as the Doctor. There's no way I bear a passing resemblance to David Tennant so I'm not going to use that. If we jump forward a little bit then we'll be able to find one that I actually like and that's the second Doctor, Patrick Troughton. Uh, there's Tom Baker right there. So people have done loads of stuff, but I quite like the look of that one. If we jump onto that, then we can see what that image is like. So that looks a bit like my coat that I wear. If I take that figurine and remove the head and replace it with my head, I'll have quite a decent bobble head. So let's get that file there for that one. If we go to files, then we can see the one that we're interested in. There it is right there. And then we can download that and collect that body. Okay, now we've got our model. Let's jump over to Tinkercad. We'll create a new design, 3D, and it'll open us up into the workspace. Now, I always work with the ruler on, so I always put the ruler on just to help me know where I am with things. Once the ruler's in place, we can import the model we just downloaded, choose the file, there it is, second docker updated, open it. Now, it'll ask us a few questions, whether we want to work in millimetres or inches, and the scale we're going to import it. I think that model will be a bit small, so let's double it and import it. Okay, there it is. If we click on it, we'll get the information on its height. You can see it's about 70 uh, millimeters or seven centimeters tall. That's kind of a nice height. That'll print on just about anything, including the tiny Tina 2 and the Elegoos and just a whole range of things. It's a nice size of model, but we need to do a couple of other things with it. Let's put a base on it because the base obviously will be the thing that stops it falling over. Let's make it three millimeters high and 50 by 50. And then we can center we just highlight both of those, click the center, and we can center it to the base. His feet are sinking into the base, so let's raise him by three millimeters so he stands on top of the base and doesn't sink into it. There we go. And now we can join those two together by merging them. And then we want to chop off his head. <laughs> to chop off his head, pick a hole. We're going to put that, uh, it was 70 high, so let's say 60 at the first guess. Center them. Click on that and then click that. We'll zoom us to that so we can have a look. And we can see it's far too high. So let's lower him by five, call that 55. Too high, too low rather, 58, 59. And we're at kind of a nice height, but it's then his chin is still sticking out there. So if you see that, that allows us to rotate it. So let's rotate it by a few degrees and we can cut off his head. And then just merge that. And there we go, our headless doctor figurine. Now we want something to put the bobble head on. And the bobble head is really just going to be a couple of cylinders. And the first cylinder, let's just make sure it's cylindrical. We want it at 15. By 15 and then we can raise that up to 25. Now we're going to put a spring on there and the spring I happen to know is um, five millimeters in the internal so we get another one. This time we want it 30 and five and five and then if we merge those two, so let's line them first. Then when we place that on his neck, 
that little sticky out bit will be where the spring goes but it won't go any further now just looking at that let's raise that up to 60 center these two zoom in on that we can see it's far too big so let's undo that and reduce the size of that zoom in we can see it's not bad actually now we can use the arrow keys it's going to be a quite a lot because this remember is only six millimeters we've got it set at one millimeter let's set it at point one and if we use the arrow keys on that then we can position that head over the neck i forgot to merge them so let's merge them now Okay, let's drop it down a bit and that will sink it into his body and then we can play with that by moving it with the arrow keys or changing the size of it until we get a nice position where it fits in the neck. When we've got the position where it fits in the neck we can then merge them and there it is made yellow just so it stands out a little bit. Now we've got the body and the bit that the bobble head's going to go on of course we need the bobble head so let's import it. Now I did work on this scan before and turn it into a bust so I'm going to import the bust but I've printed that bust so I know that it's too big. I'm going to scale it down to 60% because really you're aiming for the head to be about a third of the size so the body should be two thirds, the head one third and that creates that nice cartoon character kind of effect and there it is now we're going to do exactly the same thing that we just did we're using these basic shapes and in this case the box hole if i hold that with a little red square and pull it it will resize that for me and i can pull that along swing it around and we can see that it's more or less at the shoulders so we want to make that a bit higher a little bit higher until where we get it to where we want it to be And we fiddle on with that until it will chop off the everything apart from the head I want. It's the same routine where we removed the head. The only thing we really need to remember is that this head has got to sit on that stick along with a spring on it and the spring is 25 millimeters long. So we need to make a hole in there that will take that and to do that we use a hole, make a circle, change that to 15 and 15 and then the that will be merged in the center of the head and it'll allow it to sit on the spring and look natural but the spring might move so what we're going to do is add another one but this time we change that height to 25 which will give us a little indentation of five millimeters by five millimeters so we change that to five and that to five then we can align them by using the aligning tool and it still remains a hole even though I align them and I merge them we get that kind of hole that we're going to put in the center of the head so the spring will sit in this section here and with a bit of glue we'll make sure it doesn't fall out and that's so much broader that it'll be able to wobble on that bit there so let's do that and there we go if I swivel that under there you can see the little indentation right there which the spring will sit in and there's our larger hole which will cover the spring in the neck and allow it to bobble now we're ready to just export those and print them so we export them as an STL file and it will export as an STL file. So we've opened Algu Cura and we're using the Neptune 3 Pro let's load up the file you do that by clicking there we can click on the there it is there's my head And there's the body. Let's arrange those and check. There we go. Check this section where we look to see whether we've got some raft. There it is. And we want support. We want support touching the bill plate. Hit slice. 
and it's created the file. We can see it's going to use 33 grams, it's going to take 11 minutes, to, uh, 3 hours 6 minutes to print and we can save that to file and that's the g-code file that we're going to print. So there is the body, there is the head all printed off and here is my spring and this spring as I say it's 5 millimeters by 25 millimeters, and we have to glue that in. Now I've heard people say do things like use hot glue, all kinds of stuff. I'm just going to use a bit of crazy glue, squeeze it on the end there Pop it in the head so that it goes in that indentation. And then a bit of this stuff which is Mitre Kit Activator and that will turn that glue and keep it nice and solid in there. Then we need to glue it onto this bit and for that a bit more crazy glue on the And then put the head in an attitude that you want it. So I want it just a little to one side. There we go. <laughs> Ta -da! I showed this to my wife. She killed herself laughing and said, we have to have that in a mantelpiece. So the point is, you can learn all of this stuff by using what others have done as a springboard for your own creativity while you learn what you need to learn to be able to do models and designs right from scratch. You don't have to be able to do that to do some really cool and amusing things like this stupid bobblehead. I mean, who knows? Maybe it'll get inducted to the Hall of Fame. I'm going to put this on um, Thingiverse, of course, and it will be in the description with the link. Now, I'm not arrogant enough to think you might want my head, but you might want the Doctor's body so you can put your own head on it, and as I've done the adaptions on the body now, then that's obviously freely available. Of course, I will mark this as a remix and give credit to the person who originally designed the body because that's what you do. Anyway, <laughs> that's going to my mantelpiece. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching and please do remember to like and subscribe.